Hello and welcome to episode 101 of Jaga Vision. Um, I'm Jared Nyberg. I'm co-owner of Jaga Silk. I host these shows. Um, you can go and check out old episodes on our YouTube channel. Um, if you're watching from there right now, you can also click subscribe and you can get notifications when we go live. Uh, normally we go live at 2 o'clock on Thursdays. Um, today's a special case. We had um, some guests booked at 11. Um, that I unfortunately had to uh, reschedule. So we're actually going to bring them on next week. So we're going to have um, uh, a live from India segment for you where we're going to drink some of the selections from the Doka State with the Lochan family. have been on the show before. That's going to be really exciting. So I hope you tune in next week. Um, so this week, uh, what we decided to do is answer some questions. So there's um, apparently, I was talking to some folks who do some uh, marketing work for us and a uh, question that comes up a lot is the difference between um, between green tea and matcha. Uh, now, uh, this question was somewhat surprising for me because they're the same thing. Matcha is a green tea, but apparently, you know, it, it, it does actually uh, remind a person that that isn't necessarily um, what is the word here. Uh, the, the, the norm for everybody. It's not like, you know, a penny is a penny, a dog is a dog, a cat is a cat. Um, uh, matcha is a green tea, though, and um, I think it's, it's helpful to understand that. So um, so to put green teas in context and to understand matcha, it might be worthwhile to just talk about them a little bit. So uh, when you want to go and make yourself a green tea and you're a farmer, you're going to be uh, working with a plant called Camellia sinensis. So Camellia sinensis is the Latin name for the tea plant. Um, you want to transform that tea plant into different teas. So say you want to make yourself an oolong, you want to make yourself a green tea, you want to make yourself a white tea, you want to make yourself a, uh, um, a, a like a dark tea or, or, or a very famous dark tea, the pu'ers. Um, there's different things that you can do, but a lot of uh, what's going to define what that tea is, is how you manipulate an enzyme uh, via, um, uh, it's an enzyme called the PPO enzyme, or polyphenol oxidase. Um, and when you harvest those tea leaves, the, the polyphenol oxidase enzyme does start to trigger. It, it begins uh, to um, um, kind of do its thing. Um, and uh, what ends up happening is um, you uh, have a, um, you basically let it uh, um, oxidize the leaves. It's, don't even worry about it. <laughs> um, uh, you, you oxidize the leaves, uh, um, and, and what's, what's going to happen here is there's going to be a transformation of the catechins in the leaves into theoflavins. And it's, gonna, it's going to um, change um, the color, it's going to change uh, the way that you perceive the flavor, um, it's actually going to have a, a cellular transformation. There's going to be a lot going on that's going to make um, the tea transform, but it's going to be really connected to this, this enzymatic oxidation process. If you want to make yourself um, um, an oolong, um, you're going to let it uh, kind of do its work. The, the, the word is, the kind of the official literature out there seems to suggest that, um, that you can qualify the amount of oxidation um, via um, an understanding of how much moisture has been lost during the, the uh, oxidation process. But this isn't really technically true, we've learned. Um, and uh, so there is a, it's a little bit more complex than that. But that is, in the industry, we sort of taste um, we we, we uh, assess visually uh, the color, and then we start to apply uh, percentages of oxidation to the different teas that we that we have. And so, the kind of the general literature out there suggests that you know 20 to 80 percent. I say literature. I should say the general sort of opinion of the tea industry is that a 20 percent to 80 percent oxidation. You're in this oolong window. You go a little bit deeper than that, and you're in crimson tea or what we call black tea window. But if we're talking about green teas to get today, it does make our conversation a little bit simpler. The idea behind green teas is do everything you can to prevent that enzymatic oxidation from occurring. You actually don't want any browning of the leaves. Um, to achieve this, you want to harvest the tea leaves and you want to process them within 23 hours of the harvest. Um, if you go and you want to get yourself, um, you know, some Camellia sinensis leaves in Japan, um, and you're a tea farmer um, in, uh, uh, in the country, and you want to make yourself that green tea, you can you can actually have a setup where you're you're throwing your harvest into the back of, of, a, of a little truck. Um, uh, we've been in situations where we see there's fans hooked up and it's blowing cold air onto the leaves, trying to cool them down so that it can further pause that, that opportunity for the PPO enzyme to work, because again, you don't want the PPO enzyme to transform the tea leaves. Um, uh, brown 
tea leaves when you're making yourself a green tea is considered a flaw in the process. So within 23 hours, they want to do what? They want to deactivate that enzyme. And the way you deactivate that enzyme, oh, and I'm joined by my guest right now. Um, the way you do deactivate it is through heat. Um, Sherry Ann uh, from Sister Speak, uh, welcome uh, to episode uh, 101 of uh, Woo! of uh, of Jaga Jaga Vision. So. Wow, 101. Yeah, pretty pretty wild, eh? Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> that's that's the. I don't know what you just said, but, uh, oh, Ben, oh, I see, yes, okay, I was mishearing you, and I'm like, I don't think she's saying what I think she's saying. Oh, no, <laughs> I guess she wasn't saying a swear word. No, okay. laughing because of this shirt, it just says Ben, John. Amazing, amazing, okay, so I ended up um, going with a show today that's actually um, answering a question that apparently is a common question, uh, oh. according to our, um, the, the marketing team that we, that we work with. Um, and that is a lot. Of, a lot of people online are wondering what the difference between green tea and matcha is. And I was going through this whole explanation of, of how uh, how you transform uh, tea uh, leaves into different genres, etc. And I was going to focus on green tea. But that's a question for you, Sh Sherry Ann, Sister Speak. If you were going to answer that question, if somebody said to you, "What is the difference between matcha and green tea?" What would you say? Um, I would Putting say you on that. The spot. Okay, I would say matcha is the actual tea leaf ground up. Yeah. really finely and yeah. uh you actually get the whole leaf whereas green tea is the leaf steeped okay okay that's like one of the things obviously there's more to it yeah no um what is well then um uh, I'll, I'll rephrase the question is matcha a green tea uh i, I would think so yeah it is so that is what, you know, it's good. This is, this is great. Cause I was actually, I was having this, I was, I was asked this question. I'm like, but everybody knows the answer to that question. Of course, you know, it's, it's, it's like asking, you know, is a, is a lager a beer, you know? Like what's the uh, difference yeah. between beer and an ale, you know? Or like, what's the difference between wine and, um, and uh, I don't know, what's the, what's another example here? Like, a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry why I'm laughing. It's cause it, what I, what, you thought I said when I entered the show. <laughs> <laughs> Bench! <laughs> it sounds, it's, you know, when you don't know and you don't see the shirt, I just, I could only hear the audio. I just kept hearing bench, but like, I wasn't <laughs> bench that I was hearing. I was not hearing bench. Um, but so it was very funny. I was very surprised. But here we are. Um, I'm sorry, I, you were saying something. Anyway, I'm going to just answer this question really simply, is that matcha is a green tea. Green tea is the genre, and within um, the genre of green tea, there are thousands of different green teas, if not hundreds of thousands of different green teas, of which one of them is matcha. And they're from the same plant as black tea and crimson tea. This is, crimson I kind of, I think, I think I went into it a little bit top heavy, but yes, that is the, that is the long and short of it, is that is that they all come from the same plant, yes, but like even before we get there, what is the difference between matcha and green tea? They are the same thing because matcha is a, a uh, it makes up a, a small sliver of the, the green teas out there, but it is a green tea. And I think, I think maybe what people are wondering is what's the difference between loose leaf green tea and matcha green tea, maybe? Uh, but maybe I think they just uh, also I, I, I when I'm doing my sessions where I do I do a training course with um, well you're aware of this but the, those watching may not be is that Jaga Silk does regular training um, with our wholesale customers and and a lot of our wholesale customers are cafes and so we end up uh, focusing a lot on this and I actually even when I'm teaching people about matcha I, I open up the training sessions talking about um, talking about the um, uh, I, I open up the training sessions talking about the um, the differences between the different genres of tea because I want them to know that like if somebody says hey can I have a green tea when they come to the cafe that they can suggest a matcha and I think one of the, the issues is that matcha is so like when you ask for a matcha at a cafe they assume you want a matcha latte in North America which is I think also unfortunate so Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice to be able to say like, hey, you know, like matcha is a green tea, and then if it's like, well, that's kind of weird. Why would you put milk in your green tea? And it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, like, 
if we took at this from a traditional perspective, um, thousands of years it's been enjoyed just as is, as a, quite a strong drink, um, more like an espresso. And it's kind of actually unfortunate that there's, um, there's so much confusion there. Because I think that if you like green tea and you don't like matcha for whatever reason, um, it's probably a preparation issue or a, a sourcing issue. But, we, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, really, though, is it's, it's, it doesn't actually make any sense because it is a green tea. It is a green tea. So, so if you like green tea, you, you have to like matcha. It's just there's a way that you might need to interact with it to make it taste more like the green teas that you're more familiar with make it lighter for example yeah. or uh, make sure it's not oxidized because there's such an opportunity for oxidation right with the micro milling yeah. process so yeah um okay here's my next question for you Sharon. um so if matcha is a green tea uh which it is um what what is what is special about matcha in comparison to say a, a loose leaf green tea well i would say because it's ground up and instead of steep it's no. because it's ground up and you're actually ingesting the leaf. So why, so can't, actually, why can't I take this sencha in my hand here and mill it into a powder and call it matcha? What well, was stopping me from Oh, I was going to say it's special because you get more nutrients, but I don't know why? Why, you can't, why you can't mill them. Oh, because it's already been roasted in a certain way, the sencha. Um, you know, uh, well, like, why can't I take any green tea, like a longjing or an enchiulu or any of those well, things? before you roasted it into that kind of tea and call it a matcha you know to correctly call something matcha it actually goes through a specific growing process rather than like uh, i mean there's it's it's all all a part of this puzzle but like to correctly oh. call something matcha um it needs to be uh it needs to be shade growing oh. um, so there's a shade growing process and um you need to be working with you know uh pretty supple leaves here um and there's another tea there called gyokuro in the industry, and it's also shade grown. But you can't just take gyokuro and mill it down, because um, uh, uh, because uh, essentially, um, if you if you just take gyokuro and you um, and you you mill it down, you're 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 gonna get stems. So an another important part of the the whole journey is is to make sure that your tea leaves have been deveined and destemmed and and that process used to be done by hand if you can believe it so there was a there was a time and that's why it used to be thousands of dollars a kilogram and through the use of robotics and machinery etc you've seen a, a big a drop in the the price per kilogram of matcha to make it something that's actually even feasible to use in an environment like we see today in cafes etc so yeah that that deveining destemming shade growing um and when they bring it to like the tea factory after harvest, after they've show, shade grown it, they actually take it to a completely different factory because if you want to if you want to make sencha, you would take those same you know say you wanted to make a shade grown sencha, your shade grown leaves, you shade grow them, you bring them to a factory. That factory that's meant for sencha is actually gonna it's actually gonna hit them with steam and then it's gonna roll them, it's gonna like bruise them and roll them into needles. And there's like a 16 step, 17 step process of, of preparing it. But if there's a lot of like rolling and shaping and rolling and shaping and rolling and shaping and then a bake off and, and a breakup of uh like when you roll you don't want any of the kind of like balls in there so like there's like uh, uh machines that are used to kind of like make it all night like when you look at essentia it's, it's it's rolled right yeah into a needle whereas matcha you take it to a tensha factory and to make tensha which is the the material you would use for milling into matcha you actually dry them flat so that they can then be deveined and destemmed using a filter system where you push them through and it breaks the 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 kind of the pure part of the leaf off from the veins and the stems and then the veins and the stems are separated out and you're left with just the pure part of the leaf that's been shade grown and then and then that part at that time is called ara tencha or rough tencha and then when you want to go and mill it, you do a further kind of um, breakup of it so that it's a little bit more compact and easier to mill. Um, and then you also uh, finish fire it. Um, um, and so you, you toast it a little bit and uh, caramelize some of those sugars. And, and that's a normal thing with all Japanese teas. Um, even if you're not browning the leaves through this reaction of heat and tea, um, you are going to be like doing a light toasting. And um, and then at that point you would put it into a mill 
Now, if you just throw it into like a uh, a blade mill for in your kitchen, and you 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 know like those coffee mills that have the blade, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, or like these spice grinders, and you shake it, or you throw it into your Vitamix or something. Um, you're not going to be able to make matcha um, because uh, well, it would be extremely hard anyways because you need to have a consistent um, grind size of less than 10 microns. And that mesh size is, uh, and one micron, you know this probably as a scientist, is, is, is less than one, one hundred, it's actually exactly one one hundredth of a millimeter is a micron. So 10 microns is, um, yeah, one, one tenth of a, of a millimeter. So it's, it's, it's or no, one hundredth of a millimeter is one micron, so 10 microns. Yeah, so you want to do 10 microns. Pretty, pretty wow. tough. Right, and if it's not less than one mic, uh, one, less than ten microns, it's not, it's not milled uh, to a level where it can technically be called matcha. Wow! So, so you're able to do that. We do that, and we test on a. We actually did a show on this, but we actually use a, a grind gauge. I actually have it right here. So we. Um, there's, there's no bitterness in this matcha that I just got, by the way. Amazing. The bitter, okay. Bitterness of, only in that one ever. That one. That one ever. Okay. Cool. So we were able to, to figure it out. Um, this yeah. is this is so we make a solution that we that we um, that we make kind of like a sludge and then we run it over this 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 micron gauge and it, we prove to ourselves every morning that it's that it's less than um, uh, that it's less than um, five microns. So you can see I don't know, it's hard to see. Cool. but um, can you see that? Yes. I'm drinking the juicy peach, by the way, but I, I had a matcha just before this. Amazing, yeah. You know, I kind of flipped the flipped the the conversation. We were gonna those watching. Uh, uh, Sherry Ann was gonna enjoy a, a crimson tea with us. She didn't necessarily have the tea from the Doak Estate, which is where our visitors um, are from, um, but she had a crimson tea, and we were gonna be talking a little bit about oxidation. Um, it turns out I'm actually home right now. Still, um, I didn't quite make it to. Burlington today, so I thought <laughs> you've got the, you've got the setup. You've got the setup. So we could have done the guy one. Yeah, we could have. I just was out on the way out, uh, and then it all shifted. Okay, you know that's My all question. good. That's all good. Yeah, this this is often easy. Should I tell you a really quick quick thing about it? What happened? Sure. What happened? So life is just interesting, but this had nothing to do with why I didn't make it out the door. But you know, um, I just wanted to just mention like how amazing the tea is, like when I'm doing like bookings. Mm, okay. Because like the responses are like I'd say comical at some time. Okay. Like we. <laughs> so, okay, is this even anything to do with tea? Uh, we having the tea series. That's what I wanted to mention. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you you you, you the responses have been comical, and the tea has been okay, helping. So no, the tea has been helping when I'm doing, like, when I'm interacting with venues, like, for booking, you know, for the van. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, uh, for some reason, someone will help us with the bookings, whatever. But uh, in a new area, it's always interesting. So, like, one gig will have, this is within a 30-mile radius, okay? Okay. One gig has a great budget, and it's, like, a listening crowd, super fun outdoor event, right? Okay. And then the next gig, like, they write back, this is how our compensation works. I cannot believe they're asking this of musicians, first of all. Two 45-minute sets. Okay. For tips only. Ooh, okay. 50% of your meal covered. Two drinks. And a very clear statement as to have your volume level be appropriate so that people can talk over you, basically. Wow. <laughs> that's the style of gigs people are trying to give musicians like can you believe how like why does that model even exist well yeah you know i think what is it for? i think that it's um it's probably a, a shop that, that that doesn't have a budget that just wants um live music and they they feel that they're providing an opportunity rather than looking at it as an egalitarian or that they need to do something extra to get the musician in. So I see it in my industry all the time too. I'll have yeah. um, industries or different regions or different kind of styles of, of, of businesses where um, I would see this a lot, say in, uh, in say supermarkets that were having a challenging time or something. And they would be like, Hey, you know, like 
I want I want you to uh, give me free product to put on the shelf, and then I'll let you sell your stuff here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's sort of like that. It's like it's that perspective, right? Right. It's yeah. like I'm giving you an opportunity. It's not that I'm better than you, but it's that I think that I'm being good to you by allowing you the opportunity to be in my space. And I I find that that doesn't really jive well with me, but it works for some people. You know, like they just want to be, they want to be heard. They 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 or they just want the performance opportunity. I don't think that that kind of system is going to get a, an establishment, a kind of a top-notch act. It's going to filter out, um, at, at the very least, um, musicians like yourself that are going to be like, that's absolutely, where's the egalitarianism? You know, like, I believe that um, the customer isn't always right. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but I do believe that... Um, that um, uh, we are all kind of right together. We're all wrong together. We're all human beings. So yeah. it's, it's really yeah. important that we establish um, interactions where we're, we're, we're all comfortable uh, with, with the arrangement that's been made. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I guess it's the whole culture of like asking a musician or someone to share their art and like specifically asking them to like, I get a volume thing and like, but like to specifically ask someone to not engage, then you're practicing non-engagement of doing something you really love. Yeah. Um, I think that's the hardest part I've had with like some places in general in North America. Like I did not experience that in Europe with a single venue. Right. Um, but I experienced that a lot in the States and it's so fascinating when you go to Costa Rica, there are models of music that are modeled after it, mm -hmm. after the kind of the North American style of like shove a musician in the corner and, you know, um, and so they're popping up too. So basically when all this happens, you're like, why does this even exist? You just have a nice cup of tea <laughs> and, glass, and yeah. like you just kind of wean out the gigs that like, hopefully they're doing okay yeah. and they're not like struggling, you know? Yeah. But the really like, or I could be like, hey, maybe we could just meet up sometime and have some tea and talk about this model. Like, I don't think you're going to maybe get musicians that are passionate if yeah. you do that. Yeah. You might hurt some people's creative souls even. <laughs> tea, you know, matcha. I should, tea. I should do that. Eh? You want a free fill? Let's have some tea. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt some creative soul here. <laughs> free, a free fill. Yeah. Oh my God, same thing. So basically, you're asking for a free fill. <laughs> that's the, that's that's the comparison I'm making here. Yeah, that there's well, um, yeah. there's this like you know we work uh, really hard I think to 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 have these great relationships with these um, amazing farmers and then we you know we pack it down we design packaging we fill it we we try to keep it fresh we put in a lot of data we put in a lot of work and then um to be asked to just fill for free and just be grateful if it sells it feels really kind of weird it's kind of like being shoved into a corner and and being told to play for tips. <laughs> well, in Germany, when you're shoved in the, you're not shoved into the corner. Sometimes you play for tips, like mm -hmm. it's past the hat. But they actually will have somebody there. Their specific job for the night is to pass the hat yeah. every set, and everybody knows to contribute a decent amount to support all the music. Sure. And then you also have a listening crowd. So but you, like, you kind of need to spell that out pretty clearly for the uh, for the musician to want to be involved in something like that, right? So. Um, yeah. I'm going to, while we're talking, um, I was just going to quickly make a matcha. I thought it might be a good idea. Um, and, uh, and just sort of like continue this conversation if that works for you. Should I make a matcha as well? Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Okay. So let's go to. And then I, um, let's see, I do have to go in a little bit. Yeah. Finally to bring <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah. This will be a quick session we started a little late so those that are watching probably got surprised by the 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 odd timing of today's jagavision as well um but uh we're here but we're here we're here okay so i kind of have my nice video set up i think uh that's very visible um i'm gonna throw in this is again this is the this is a green tea <laughs> matcha yeah. and we're gonna throw two grams on and so i guess sherry ann we'll ask you that question we'll ask you those two questions again this is gonna be like how we uh so if you if you were asked if somebody says what's the difference between matcha and green tea what would you what would you tell them now um i would say that matcha is shade growing i'd probably tell them the same thing but i'd add the shade growing in there would you well yeah 
But remember, matcha is a green tea. There is no difference between matcha and green tea. It is a green oh, tea. Oh, right. That's, but I would say, yeah, but like... But there is a difference between micro-milled green tea and loose-leaf green tea. Okay. I feel like, wouldn't it still be the matcha is green tea, shade-grown green tea ground up? Really fine? Matcha is green... Matcha is green tea. There is no... Yeah. yeah. But it is a green tea that has been shade grown. Oh, so there isn't... I see. That's, that's the big... That's the big... That's what I'm hoping the big takeaway from today's show is for those watching is that... Oh. If you were ever confused about the difference between matcha and green tea, no longer be confused. It is the same thing. It is a green tea. Yes. Matcha is a green tea. It's just a special kind of green tea. You know, this kind of feels like maybe a little bit of a trick question in a multiple choice exam in which I take it to the teacher afterwards and yeah. say, hey, you know, this actually could be interpreted this way or this way. Yeah. So there might be more than one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, that's how you, uh, that's how you got to roll sometimes. <laughs> so I, that's being... really cool, but what's the difference? There is no difference. They're both green yeah, tea, but there's a difference in the way that they're growing and the way that they're, uh, like I say, a sencha and a matcha. Yeah, that's that is ninety five percent correct. Okay, what's the five percent incorrect? You said they're both green tea. So the difference between green tea and matcha is that they're both green tea. I just want people's minds to shift to be not that when you think green tea, oftentimes you think like a loose leaf tea or a tea in a tea bag, and then when you when you compare that to matcha, it gets confusing because because matcha should be in that same visual. It should be just one of many in the genre called green tea. Yes. So it shouldn't be like in your head when you're thinking the difference between matcha and green tea. You should rearrange that thought pattern and go like, matcha is a green tea. What's the difference between the different kinds of green teas, of which matcha is one of them? Ah. That's that. That's all. So. What's the difference between matcha and green tea? Well, they're both. Matcha is green tea. Exactly. That's, that's the answer. That's 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 it. Yeah, matcha is green tea. It is green tea. Um. It's freaking good green tea. Oh. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. I think I have the... Oh, I have the matcha suhu... Suyu hikari. Okay. From Hisho... Hosh, Hoshino Mira, Fukuoka, Japan. That's the one. That's, uh, that's, um... That's our good, uh, good friend Takaki-san's tea that, um, that I toasted here. Oh, yeah. That, remember that one that you, we made the, the Christmas eggnog latte with? Yes. Yeah, that's that one. So it's a, just a new roast. Yum. I'm making another misto. I like making mistos. Okay. I'm making another green tea. That's, this one's Essentia. Oh, I think if I make another one, I'm going to be like, because I drank all the juicy peach and I had a lot to be Yeah, no. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to catch up. I'm, you know, like, you're, 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 you're ahead. You're like... You're over here. I'm back here, right? You're like juicy peached. You're matcha, yeah. and now I have to, I have to, I have to join in the fun here. So, um, you're drinking one that I that I toasted on the tea roaster here, and now I'm drinking this one here. This 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 senshi abakita. So, um, uh, um uh, the those watching, you can see, the leaves I'm pouring in are not powdered. This is not a matcha. This is a sencha. and the difference. This is like a like a quiz game for you today, Sherry. It's like it's it's kind of like episode yeah. one. It's episode one hundred and one, but we we got to call it like like T episode one hundred and one. Like this is T one hundred and one. So so the difference between sencha and matcha. Do you know that difference? That's an interesting one. Um, sencha would be like the wait. Which one did you say was also shade grown? Was sencha shade grown too? You can have shade grown sencha. It's actually more normal than people realize. Um, but normally, uh, what I was talking about was gyokuro. And um, um, so, the shade growingness, the fact that it likely, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, sencha seems to imply that it hasn't been shade grown, even though secretly it has. It's a weird thing. Mm. When you call something gyokuro, you also want it to be the best that you have. So, you wouldn't shade grow something that's okay and then call it gyokuro. It'd be kind of weird want it to be like uh, it's this is the good stuff kind of thing is this organic this one the tsuhikari single cultivar there is not organic no, no it's not. but they, they don't they make a habit to like spray as little as possible only if necessary that's fujioka-san takaki-san's um 
He does spray, unfortunately. The stuff that he doesn't spray is the Yabuchita. He does a unsprayed, completely organic lot for Tempesil. Wow. Um, so that one you'll you'll get. Um, this is, I mean, he's not like a, there's people that are like heavy sprayers, and he's not uh, one of them. But um, he's not as good as say uh, Fujioka for keeping it pretty low, and he's not as good at, as Yamaguchi who does zero. So Yamaguchi Sun's teas are like a hundred percent organic. Um, wow. Now the, they you can't. You would test if any of the spray gets into the tea. I'm certain that it does. You know, in terms of organic, um, I'm a, you know, I'm a big pro-organic. I want everything to be organic that we carry. But the reality is, is that I haven't been able to source um, craft small batch teas that are carefully put together that are delicious and organic. So it's like, it's weird because um, with vegetables, um, when I have organic lettuce versus non-organic lettuce, like 10 times out of 10, it's going to taste so much better. And I, 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 I don't find that same correlation with tea, unfortunately. Um, so so that I was carrying some stuff um, from uh, a farm a number of years ago. It was like our whole line. If you remember the butterfly and dragonfly and that kind of era of jug of soap, um, those were all certified organic. But every year we would cup them, and every year they were tasting a little bit worse than the year before. And it got to a point where I just wasn't really drinking them anymore. So I felt yeah. like I wasn't achieving what I really wanted to achieve. So if you want to go for a light spray, if you want to go for completely unsprayed, just drink the Yamaguchi. If you want to go for a light spray, drink the Yabukita. If you want to go for unsprayed with Takaki, drink the Yabukita. The Tsuikari, it's sort of like, I wouldn't say it's industry norm level, but it's not as low as Fujioka. Does that make sense? Basically, all your matcha is like less sprayed than the industry norm. I would say that that's a fact, yeah. That's awesome. Cheers to that. Okay. That's cool. For an entire organic lot. So the difference between matcha and sencha, yeah. um, it sounds like you said it, but it could be, it seems as though it's in the milling, in the way it's grown and then the milling process. Yeah, the matcha. And then the fact that matcha has been de-veined and de-stemmed. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. There's, there's, there's that, that part of it, too. So, um, yeah, and, and I was kind of in the middle of explaining a bit about uh, how green tea is processed in general when you joined the call for our audience. And uh, yeah. just yeah, right. one of the things that, that to make keep it a green tea is to, to kill the polyphenol oxidized enzymes sooner rather than later. Um, and the way you do that is through heat and uh, just uh, that kind of deactivation. Um, and then, uh, and then um, once you've deactivated it, you, uh, you do, which you're going to do through steaming it, um, you've got yourself, uh, you're well on your way to making a green tea. It's going to be pretty critical that you that you deactivate that PPO enzyme. So as little enzymatic oxidation as possible keeps it that nice green color. So it works. Yeah. Cool. So couldn't you try and grow shade growing tea in your yard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could. <laughs> totally could. Yeah, it's actually, um, my yard is by very, it's by, by um, almost happenstance. Uh, everything in there is shape growing. So. Yeah, in the back. <laughs> the whole, you, the whole yard. <laughs> the whole yard. Okay, so one question for you. If you had a piece of land yeah. uh, in Machosun, yeah. or if you had a piece of land in Maple Bay, what kind of tea would you grow? Crimson tea. Okay. Uh, I might do a parched green tea, but um, I would start with crimson tea. Because, okay. um, because uh, to make, say, a matcha, uh, you need a millions of dollars to get the factory, um, the Tencha factories that that create the Tencha. Um, to do oh, it all, wow. all to do it all by hand is an extremely laborious, extremely time consuming process. To put yeah. it in perspective, to hand roll Sencha without the equipment, uh, eight hundred grams takes about uh, five hours. That's uh, a lot of volunteers from the International Tea Appreciation Society. Yeah, you know we should we should totally do that. Just like hand rolling. Maybe we can bring in uh, Takaki-san, he's a hand-rolling sencha coach, and we could do hand Oh, I'll, I'll volunteer to learn. Okay. We can steam it, and we'll do some hand-rolled uh, uh, sencha, and we'll do like old school stuff. That's, that's that's actually a great idea. We could do some workshops. I'd be into that. I'd be into that. It'd be so cool we get him to, to come on over again, or did he come before? He's come uh, twice now. Uh, no, once, uh, for the uh, 2019 Tea Festival. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So. Um, 
So, uh, actually just comes to mind, though, that your um, conversation where you were um, talking about um, how tea is, is helping you just sort of chill after having an unfortunate uh, sort of um, interaction with an odd way of setting up a, uh, a, a relationship with musicians. Um, yep. I, you know, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think I was talking to somebody more recently about why, why I'm into tea in general. And, um, and I think that I realized that uh, it's because um, I, I think there's that connecting piece. There's also that calming piece. So yeah. when I when I drink uh, tea with another person, there's an opportunity to connect. Um, it also kind of like um, even when you know two cultures that have never met each other, when they interact for the first time, food or drink as a gift um, is mm -hmm. awesome because it just really brings down that 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 very natural and um, instinctual part of being a human being, which is when we other people, we get, we want to, we have this instinctual response to put a wall between us and them, especially if we don't understand where they're coming from. So to have some tea or some food together lets us perhaps understand. And I always like to think about why would a person set something up like this? And I'd like to believe that it's not all just greed or this desire to be unfair and take advantage of people. I think most people are good. Um, but I think they can convince themselves to do things that are not very good. Um, so, um, and also what is good, what is not good is going to be very subjective. Um, so yeah, I would definitely agree that it would be a challenge if I was a musician to go and play somewhere that wants me to just play for tips and be like, okay, you know, but I don't know. I'm also in a very different place with my music than you are. I'd probably actually be pretty stoked. I just want to play it, <laughs> you know? No, but I would be okay with it as long as it was in a listening room. Would you really want to be going there and then just having all these people talk over you and nobody paying attention? Would that be exciting for you? Um, I would say probably not, but I've never experienced it. You've experienced oh, okay. it. And so, so you would be like, I don't want to do... Um, I don't want to do that because I've experienced that and I didn't enjoy that. But, you know, there yeah. could be that somebody's does a different style of music. Maybe their vocals are not involved at all. Maybe their, their thing is piano. Um, and yeah, it's more like, like they just the add power. to the vibe and it's more where they're playing like, a, I don't know. There's, there's just, there's ways that that might work for certain styles of music or for certain types of maybe more introspective people. So I can see where that could work for them. And it's their way of kind of saying, hey, we're not looking for a performance per se. We're, yeah, yeah. We're looking I, for, I guess, yeah, not not to say it's a good thing. Just, uh, just no, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think my, mu I don't think my music, which is very performative and is very lyric heavy, would very, would do well in an environment like that if I really think it through. I guess it's just like, it feels like it's a concept and a style of performance that's not really performance that was like, exports being exported all over the world and you know like like it just does not exist anywhere that i've been in germany and there's a band yeah. people are paying attention like uh at least half the room uh no i mean 80 90 percent of the room and uh yeah so it's just like i mean if it's 50 50 that could be okay too it's just this whole concept of like yeah no i totally i totally agree with what you're saying yeah i just like try i just i just try to understand where that how how could that develop and where's the person who developed it coming from i may yeah. not agree with them but i just try to get in their head a bit and try to understand and then i don't know if that what that does for me except maybe opens up my mind to just seeing different perspectives and just also i can just be like you know what it's not for me but it's cool that yeah. it exists you know like why does it exist it's cool, it's cool that it exists it's like i don't really think it's that cool that like bleach tea bags with 10 year old tea exists I don't think that that's cool, you know. I don't think it's cool that these kind of venues even like make it that style. Like they encourage that type uh, of, thing, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I, I always have to find some sort of silver lining in it. I really do, even with ten-year-old yeah. tea and bleach tea bags. What is the silver? <laughs> that's, there's, there's the question for the, uh, for the, yeah. the, <laughs> the day. What is the silver lining in bleached tea bags with ten-year-old tea? End of the uh, things are going rough and you can't access anything. There, there, there's a composting opportunity. 
Yeah, and there's a composting opportunity, just like there's an opportunity to compost the style of show. <laughs> oh, I man. Mean, oh. You know, I <laughs> people get discouraged. Sorry, they get discouraged at like a young air, part of their career and don't realize that a lot of the world isn't like that. Yeah, it is sad. I've actually heard people say that um, just the challenge getting guarantees in general in North America can be very discouraging. That um, when you're in, say, like um, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Kyle, when he went to Ireland, he was just floored by just how normal it was. And, you know, another yeah. mutual friend, Charles, uh, uh, the accordion player, um, he's, uh, you know, Quebec uh, really invests in the musical culture and pays musicians just to practice. You know, so it's, it's, a, very, it's a very different world. But anyway, we've hit 12 o'clock. Um, you're, uh, you gotta go, uh, to, uh, Burlington. Um, we gotta, we gotta get on with our days. Um, but it was a very, very nice conversation. I hope the takeaway of matcha is green tea is there for everybody watching. Um, I thought the question was, honestly, it, it felt, I was like, well, of course everybody knows the answer to this question, but it yeah. was, you know, that's not necessarily the case. There's a little bit of confusion, um, over what, uh, you know, what the difference between, I guess, a genre they do this in science all the time too, right? Like you have, it is, I guess this is kind of a scientific thing. It's just like how you categorize something and then there's things within those categories. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what the takeaway is. And then music, does it have a right to exist to, to do these kind of discouraging venues? Uh, who's to say? Uh, I'm glad there's... It has a right to exist. <laughs> but I, I do hope that those watching, that are musicians that have um, been in a venue where they were... They had to just pay for tips and, and uh, play for tips. You've actually been, weren't you in a, I think you played a show where they actually, they, they set up two shows at the same time when it was an open mic, and then you played one, and then they wanted you to pay the sound person because they stole all your audience. And they actually, it was a reverse. It was like, instead of, instead of them paying you, they wanted you to pay them. Oh, Do you remember really? that? That was, that was like a... 14 years ago. Yeah. Yes, we had, the, we had the, they booked us on the night of a, on the, the open mic. We had a whole showcase. Yeah. And then we, yes, and then- And then, but, your, your, but the stage for your show was behind everything and in the dark and not well lit and not even like talked about at all. And yeah. so everybody that walked in thought they were going to your show, but it was just like an open mic and you were nowhere to be found. You were in the back room and then they wanted you to pay them for the sound person that did was there. For yeah, and I, I think we just ended up walking out. Didn't we have have you also play? Yeah, and that then was one of my first shows. Yep, I would <laughs> I would call <laughs> that discouraging. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We didn't play. Yeah, we just so, walked out. Yeah, we went to. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, one one gig that I never actually even went to. I was in Portland, mm -hmm. and it was like. You ever walk somewhere and you get that pins and needle thing? Okay. A certain part of town? Yeah, I've, I've been I've been there, yeah. I had that experience in a part of Chicago when I went to the wrong address once, yeah. Oh, I had that in Chicago too. So I, this is, this is uh, the only time I've ever done this. We had a gig on tour. I think it was a feature slot in an open mic. Okay. We walked in, we felt the pins and needles. It was really like... Uh, like the part of town just felt like pretty rough, you know, and uh, I think people were like not very nice when we walked in. So we walked in and we just took four steps in and then we just walked right out and went carried on to the next city. Wow. It's the wow. only time I've ever done that. <laughs> wow, and this must have been a while ago too. And you were. That was, well, that was actually around the same time, that was like a year later. 13 years ago wow see there's there's things that we learn we learn what what works and what doesn't work that's for sure it's never happened again so okay um well i'm glad that uh you got a, a good thing going on now you got um you got your your speaking of which uh as we go uh where can people that want to check out your music um and and actually give it a listen uh go uh sisterspeakmusic.com Okay. And, uh, and also, like, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to clarify in all this, there are some venues that are tip-based or past the hat and it would be really fun. Right. Um, the but thing they, that but they got a system and people listen. Yeah. 
and there's a listening crowd and there's an engaged at least part of the crowd it's like encouraged you know so that's the difference so if you're ever a venue owner watching this i recommend if it's not going to be a very well-paying gig then there's a encouragement for um sound i mean even if tips are solid for engaging i know i know we're saying goodbye but just some sort of equivalent in my industry just came to my head i was doing a training session the other day and i had uh, a lot of people on and I used to do these sessions all the time, um, and I'm less excited about them now because I guess there's a, a video call etiquette that allows you to turn off your video and your microphone now. So that's actually becoming more normal rather than abnormal. And so I'll teach 20 people, and I'll have one person with their video on and not their mic. I hear nothing. There's no response to anything. I ask questions, and nobody answers. So it's like teaching to the void. Um, so so I, I think it, you don't want to sing to the void. That's 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 the that's the thing. Yes, it's nice. Like, it's nice to have that interaction. But we we both. We're, sorry, I know you probably want to say something to this, and then we gotta go. So what's yeah, your, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, my friend does that too. But when uh, he does a lot of Zoom classes, and he, the first thing he does is like, if you could please turn your mics on, and I could see your face. If you're comfortable yeah. with it, I'd really appreciate that. That's and what I just, said too. Eh? Oh really? And he'll just keep <laughs> saying it and saying it, and it's like, oh, whoa, okay. hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Okay, all right, well. Uh, sisterspeakmusic.com, Sherry Ann, uh, go and watch her, uh, sign up for the Patreon. You can see her performances every second Thursday of the month, I believe you're doing them. Um, uh, they're at uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, next week is your next one? Yes, and I, I just have 14 more things to say. Okay, go ahead. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really lovely to have you on. I know we could talk for hours. And, uh, yeah, no, thank you. This okay. has been fun. Awesome, cool. All right, you have a wonderful day, and good luck uh, with the rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Um, Vivek and, uh, and family are going to be on. We're going to be drinking some of the tea that they produced at the Doka State in India. They'll be live from India. It's going to be really exciting. Same time. So it'll be that odd um, 11 o'clock time uh, rather than the 2 o'clock time next week. Okay. Cool, cool. See you All later. right. All right. Thanks, Take care. Man. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. Okay. So that was, uh, yeah, Sherry Ann joining us from Sister Speak. Thank you to those watching who tuned in um, uh, this odd hour. Um, I see some viewers from the Okanagan. Um, that's, uh, that's always a lot of fun. Um, thank you. If you're watching from YouTube, you can click the subscribe button on the bottom. You'll know when we go live. Generally, it's 2 o'clock. Um, sometimes I've been editing it a bit just to fit the needs of um, when we have somebody live from another country where that time frame is just so unreasonable. Um, but we will see you again next week. So thank you so much. I'm Jared Neiberg. Go check us out. Checkusout.com.